I'm here with Luke Peters. He is the president and CEO of New Air Appliances, and he's also the CEO of a new company he'll be talking about, which is Retail Band, and he is the host of his own podcast show, Page One Podcast. Welcome, Luke, to the program. Thanks for having me, Don. Thrilled to be here and uh, in, looking forward to the conversation. Great. Well, Luke, let's start off. Tell us a little bit about uh, a little about New Air, a retail band, and we can get into Page One a little later. But tell us about those two main companies of yours first, if you would. Yeah, absolutely. And, and one grew out of the other. So New Air is the main company. I started that in 2002 with my wife, and I was a hazardous waste scientist at the time. And uh, just kind of burned the midnight oil to start this company as a side hustle, really, out of our garage. And over the years, we've grown the company. And what we do is we sell um, interesting appliances, um, beer coolers, wine coolers, and these are all our products, our brand. It, my brand is New Air. And we also have um, some licensing contracts, uh, which in certain categories can really help. And we sell uh, the products like evaporative coolers and misting fans. And we're doing that. We started direct to consumer. Um, for the first 10 years and then made a big pivot around 2012, 2013. And now we are mostly wholesale selling um, into Home Depot, Wayfair, all of those big box retailers, uh, Amazon, and still some direct to consumer on the website. And we're about uh, 50 people right now. We're in Cypress, California, which is in Orange County, mm -hmm. Southern California. And we have about a 115,000 square foot warehouse. So that's a little bit about the footprint there. We have a great, amazing team that we built over, uh, over the years. And through that, uh, just leading into the next, your next question, um, we really built up good marketing and sales expertise. So we came at um, product marketing and sales from a direct to consumer standpoint. Most of our competition in Home Depot is from an in-store uh, standpoint. And um, that, that's kind of, uh, you know, what they know. And so selling online isn't as natural for them. So I kind of noticed that and there's really nobody helping customers do what we are, can do for them with retail band where we are actually their sales and marketing arm. If, um, if one has a product that can sell on Wayfair and Home Depot, even if they're already selling it, they're probably not maximizing their sales. We can do it for Amazon too, but there's plenty of people that can help out for Amazon. So we're, we're focused on these big box retailers because no one's really doing this in the capacity that we're doing it and blending influencer marketing and helping, um, these brands launch products, sell into those retailers, and also understand all the SEO and algorithms that are involved with each retailer. Each one is like its own Google. And so that, that's what we're doing over there. It's a totally new startup. Um, but so help, help me understand this, Luke, because I'm getting a little bit, um, a little lost in the weeds here. So, so you have, so Retail Band is set up to help people who are selling appliances like a dishwasher to Home Depot and you're helping them get into Home Depot or you're help, what, tell me, I don't quite, I don't quite understand that aspect of it. Sure. Yeah. Let me, let me clarify. So, so what it is, is we're helping them sell on the online channels of Home Depot.com. Them, them being the guy that makes a dishwasher. Yeah. Any brand. Okay. Okay. So a brand that's a guy making, uh, you know, I, you know, give me a brand that you're, that you're working with right now. Yeah. So it could be somebody like a flashlight manufacturer Okay, and they are strong in store, but they don't know how to sell into these platforms. That and would, the, yep. the platform is home depot.com or home depot's retail store. No. So that would be home depot.com. So they may already be in the retail store. Gotcha. They have their product listed. They think they're doing everything they can, but they don't realize that they're giving up a lot of dollars because they're not optimizing their page placement. So they're not getting their product on page one. I get it. Okay. So you're, so when some, so when I go to homedepot.com and I'm looking for a flashlight and I put in flashlight into the search bar, uh, you help that your customer come up first in that search for flashlights in Home Depot's website. Yeah, exactly. That's a simplified way. There's a lot of stuff behind the scenes and we, we do, more, it's more than just helping them come up first. There's optimization in the platform. There's also even communication between the buyers. It's, a, it's completely managing the whole sales, mm -hmm. marketing, and all the communication with the buyers, and even down to the collateral and brand strategy. I see. Okay, fascinating. And, you, and that came as an outgrowth of the uh, new air appliances. You had experience selling in that area, and you're moving that now to help Aren't you helping your competitors though? Because you're selling, or I guess you've, unless you're not selling flashlights at Newware Appliance, but 
How does that work out? Yeah, no, great question. I mean, there, there's a ton of categories and, and, you know, it's not, I've already got a business. It's not something I had to do, but I, there is a big need for it. So we can be very selective in who we work with because it's a very high touch business. Mm -hmm. we're, we're really having to get integrated with these companies. And essentially, we, again, we can do all their sales and marketing. And so we don't need to work with a ton of clients and we can be selective of who we want to work with. And so we'll just, you know, we're going to choose categories that we're not in and we're just in a, you know, small sliver. We're just in some appliances. Right. So many more things sold on Wayfair and Walmart and Home Depot. And, and so there's um, plenty of opportunities. Interesting. So tell us about how involved are you now personally with new wear appliances versus retail band? I mean, where do you spend your time right now? Yeah, well, I'm too much time with both of them. So I'm because <laughs> you're an entrepreneur. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, when you start something, it's like when you start, everybody knows this who started a business, but I mean, the first couple of months, it's like, you're just trying to get that boulder moving and then hopefully you, you get that momentum. So, yeah. so that's a lot of the time with retail band, but it's actually a lot of fun. Um, it's, there's not, you know, it's not like, it, you know, for a first time entrepreneur and maybe there's some desperation, you're forced to do certain things. Whereas now I can, you know, I can set up a culture and processes and a strategy exactly how I want to. And there's no rush and I can do things the right way. And then, uh, but still the majority of time to your question is um, with New Air, just because, you know, New Air's keeping the lights on and uh, it's, the, it's the main business and, and um, it's, it's, it's a great brand. So mo more time there and, um, you know, mornings and maybe late evenings with Retail Band. Okay. And as Retail Band, as you mentioned earlier in the beginning of the show, it's your side hustle. Does that have separate employees, a separate company set out, or is it just people within uh, New Air that are now doing work for Retail Band? Or how did you organize that? Yeah, that's a good question. I'm actually right in the middle of uh, building out and, and looking for some, um, some great sales talent uh, as we speak. So that, that's what I'll be doing right now. Um, there's it, 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 we're definitely in a crunch and a need to do that because of the time involved and, and the, um, the response that we're receiving. But as it stands, it's just myself and one other person. Mm -hmm. um, and, but I have uh, just a lot to draw from with New Air already. I bet. So, so we have plenty of assets um, yeah. to work with, but yes, that, that's the plan going forward to build the sales team. Tell us about your competition in retail band. Is there any, or is it a fairly new uh, area or, or where, where are, where's that flashlight battery guy going now to help in this area or does he even know about it? Is this brand new? Yeah. So, okay. So there really is not any competition or anybody doing what we're doing. And honestly, that's kind of why I started it. It's, it's like the, uh, what's it called the blue ocean theory or blue ocean strategy, that book about, you know, do you want to be in a blue ocean or a red ocean where everybody's, you know, blood's everywhere and everybody's competing. So um, it's, a, it's a fun area to be in and also just happens to be our expertise. And what one could do is they could do it themselves. So they could, you know, log on to, you know, get, get a Home Depot account, list the product and learn how to get the data. But the, the thing is these, these portals, which is where all the information's housed on all of these different retailers, they're not like Amazon. It's not self-serve like Amazon. Okay. So there's a big industry out there of what I'm doing. They, the same thing's happening on Amazon because it's, easier, but it's mm. really hard because, you know, Wayfair's got its own portal. Home Depot's got, you know, a couple of its own Walmart's. So in other words, you have to kind of learn all of these different portals. And then not to mention, there's a gatekeeper called the buyer in between letting you know if products get in or out, you have to know how that works, how the pricing works. There's just a lot more to learn, but yeah, one could do it themselves or the other way one could go to a distributor. Because so are you, are you acting as a uh, consultant to your customers or are you more hands-on and your company is going to be actually uh, uh, promo, you know, working on the website on their behalf? So we'll be we'll very hands-on. We'll do all the work for them. Um, again, it's, it's on the other websites, not their own. And uh, yeah, because there's, it, it, it will be like in a consultant as in the sense that we can advise and we can help out even in supply chain, logistics, many other areas. Um, we have expertise in all of them, but the formulation of the idea is to stay very narrow, just help their brands grow on these retailers. And then I know once we get inside, we'll be able to help these companies in, in many other ways as well. I see. Yeah. So you're really a, like almost like a digital marketing agency with a very defined narrow niche to help customers advance their sales in these particular uh, markets then. Exactly. So, and, and I've got friends that have started those types of businesses along the way. 
And um, that, that's where, kind of where I saw the opportunity here. So can you tell our audience a little bit about how you helped a, a specific customer uh, or an example of where you helped somebody and how that looked? Yeah, I mean, and then going back to, so, so actually what happened over the summer is we got the a license deal with um, Frigidaire. Oh, good. Frigidaire is an amazing brand to work with. And we have that um, opportunity in the misting fan and evaporative cooler category. So these are, um, you know, somewhat niche categories, I would say, but, it, but it's a category that a lot of folks know about. And we had to go start to finish to develop the product and to, you know, the whole branding, marketing, development, work through their brand guidelines, and then get the products ranked. And, uh, you know, to get to the point here, we had a three of the Frigidaire evaporative coolers <clears throat> ranked um, on the homepage of Amazon in that example. And that, mm -hmm. was a, that was a channel that we focused on for evaporative coolers, and as well as Home Depot is another strong channel over the summer. And we did that by um, not only creating the best collateral, but you have to then make, ensure that you're getting great reviews in a lot of them. And then also understanding how to direct marketing uh, spend efficiently so that you can move up your rankings. And that's going to be, um, it's going to change by platform. So Amazon obviously has its own and so does Home Depot and so on and so forth. Hmm. Fascinating. So you're working with a company like Frigidaire to help them get their missed fan up in the rankings and get more, basically be getting more sales for missed fans. Exactly. And, and this summer it was, it was mostly the evaporative coolers um, and the misting fans as well. Um, mm -hmm. That's a category that we have to develop more of, but yeah, and, we're, and we have a licensing um, arrangement and um, it's, it's really worked out well for us. That's fantastic. And how does that play into the page one podcast? I mentioned that at the very beginning of our show that you're doing a podcast show like this is. What is that about? And how does this work in with this whole area of new air appliances and retail ban? Where does the podcast fit in? Sure. So the page one uh, with the number one page one podcast and basically representing that our goal is to get you on page one and, and how it fit in was that it, I, you know, have a, great fortunate to have a great network over the years and um, a lot of information that no one's talking about. I mean, nobody is really saying, Hey, what's what, what algorithm changes are new on home Depot or what advertising changes are new with the home Depot platform, or how do you use Wayfair sponsored ads? All of this stuff is, is happening maybe in internal meetings or small meetings at these different retailers, but no one's talking about it. So again, um, a very focused niche, but I thought it would be um, a great audience to kind of share this information with. And that's the mission of the page one podcast. And we, we just dive deep into uh, if, if you're a brand, it's really important stuff. And if you're not, um, we still talk about some cool marketing things and um, there's all kinds of other uh, fun guests that we have on the show, but it's great. So that that's what we're doing. And it's also a lot of fun to um, meet these folks. That's great, Luke. Now tell us what kind of guests do you have on the show and what type of audience are you looking at for that show? Who are the buyer, who are the listeners and who are the guests? Yeah. So the guests will be usually um, brand leaders. Okay. So it could be um, CEOs or, you know, VP level on the sales and marketing side um, who maybe have a lot of experience, um, you know, working with a Lowe's in the past and then maybe they moved on. And so that would be a a guest that can add a lot of value because they can talk about the different Lowe's platforms. And again, stuff that like literally nobody's in blogging or talking about. Um, we've done, uh, inv I just had an investor, uh, one of the leading um, um, investment bankers for Hulahan Loki and the consumer products division. So we keep it very narrow for consumer products. The category is going to be housewares. The audience is going to be um, comprised of that say there's i don't know if you you know these shows but there's two big shows the hardware and the houseware show right yeah so those are that would be the audience um would be the uh, brand owners and leaders of those companies um would be the ideal audience that's going to gain the most value but anybody with a who's selling a product is um a lot of them may not see what happens is most people just go right to amazon because it's easy mm -hmm. they don't right. think that well i could actually you know I could get a good share of sales on Home Depot or in Wayfair. And because they're a little bit more difficult, they don't realize that. So that's where we come into play. And, and um, that's where, you know, brand owners, I'm just calling brand owners, meaning, you know, CEOs or, uh, you know, firms that sell a consumer product um, would gain value from the page one podcast. 
Fantastic. And where can they, so they can go to iTunes, uh, Spotify, Google Play, and put in P-A-G-E and the number one to find your podcast show? Yeah. A P-A-G-E space, the number one space podcast. And you can also go to just retailband.com and, uh, or on LinkedIn. You can find All right. It. I have yep. that. Fantastic. Great, Luke. Um, Luke, a lot of people listening to this podcast are business owners, small business owners like yourself. And we are always, I always ask the challenges that you have faced in the past and how you've overcome them. Can you address one or two of those? Sure. I mean, uh, I've got, there's so many along the way, but I guess, um, you know, in 2012, we made a big pivot where we were, I kind of spoke about this briefly earlier, where we were 100% direct to consumer, 100% of sales. But about that time, um, large retailers started uh, coming into the market. Um, SEO wise. So they started showing up and they started advertising. So companies that are direct to consumer found it a lot more expensive to acquire customers uh, and uh, customer lifetime value, you know, is obviously going down and customer retention is more difficult because people would say trust a Home Depot more than a typical brand. So at that time um, started up a company uh, called Luma Comfort as kind of uh, not, I wouldn't say a test, but it was a new business venture to sell wholesale into those retailers and um, because I could see the writing on the wall that it was going to be tough for a direct consumer company. And if, of course, Amazon was taking market share as well. And uh, Luma Comfort did so well that then I kind of converted my newer brand to that wholesale model. And uh, I mean, we took a leap of faith because we essentially cannibalized our direct to consumer sales over the next uh, couple of years. Right now, we restarted our direct to consumer sales and we have an amazing website and, and a, and a just an amazing team running that and, and we're growing it. But what I wanted to do in the, you know, between uh, 2012 or 2013 and then 2017 and 18, which really understand and dive into and gain more share on the online wholesale side, selling into those large retailers. And so that was a, it was a big challenge. I mean, there was a lot in between to make that happen. Totally new approach on marketing, totally new sales team. We never had a sales team before. Um, just it's a different business model. Wow, fascinating. So you had to really pivot, like you said, in 2012-13, because of the competition, because the way the market was buying products away from direct-to-consumer and move into wholesale. And that's where Luma came in and you, you reorganized, I imagine you reorganized your, your staff, your operations, the whole company was reorganized to focus on wholesale. And now, as you say, it's kind of come full circle. Now you're getting back with what you've learned and going into the consumer market again. Yeah. It, it, and just like, as you say, Don, it was a, it was a total change of the company. And um, yeah, we were, I mean, we never really had a full uh, finance department. We do now. We didn't have a sales department. We do now. Uh, we didn't have order management. You know, we do now. So there's different, you just need different teams to succeed in this type of market um, or this type of industry. What about some of the people that had been with you for such a long time? Did they have to, I imagine they had to reorient themselves to the new market you had. Uh, did you have to then work with some of your staff to um, realign some skill sets or add to that? I mean, how did that transition go? Because sometimes it's very tricky when you have people who are comfortable doing what they're doing. And now you have to tell them, look, we're going to go in a different direction here. Was that, were there challenges around that area? You know what? There is less than you think. There were definitely challenges and it's, you know, it's always stuff people don't want to talk about, but you know, some long, uh, some long-term employees that um, aren't with us, but that's more actually, Don, what I would say is it's more with the growth of a company. You kind of have to have a different culture and a different um, organizational setup and you got to be more focused and you just have to be, have more specialist and be a little bit stronger. And so uh, the, the company, is going to change. I think when they when a company goes from say twenty five to fifty, it's going to change quite a bit. The the types of folks you're going to have, um, so that that's probably more of it and less of it was the the change. What 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 happened with the change is you end up hiring. You you just end up hiring those people. Mm -hmm. so, you know you don't have a sales team. You got to have a sales team. And um, but fortunately, we have a lot of people over uh, with over ten years tenureship. So we still have a some deep roots in the company, which is great. So you really had managed the, so what I hear you saying is that the growth is really what affected the, the culture and the people more than shifting the market focus as much. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's, it, it's a great uh, question you're asking and, and a nice nuance, but yeah, it is. And uh, something definitely I've struggled with and read books about and just learned a lot. And when you read, you actually find out that uh, 
it's, it's actually a very um, normal transition for that to happen, by the way. It, 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 from, from what I read, it's a, it's a very normal thing for companies to kind of go through a little bit of that transition between the growth of, of those numbers of employees. So tell us more about that. Tell our listeners more what you've learned. What would you like to pass on that you've, uh, that you found out about that? Sure. Um, gosh, I wish I could remember the book. I'll try to send, I'll try to send you an email afterwards. Yeah, I'll put it in the show notes if you send it to me. Yeah, I'll send it. It's a, it's a great book because what happened was I read this book afterwards and it was, I forget, it was like crossing the chasm or something like that, but I'll get, I'll get you with the author. And, and I was like, wow, these guys literally told my story. And uh, so I think, First of all, I think it's normal for a growing company to have a little bit of controlled chaos and some disruption when you're at, you know, 30 employees and you're growing a lot. Mm -hmm. Things are going to happen. And the other thing you learn is that, um, you know, because you might grow from five or 10 up to 30 with the same key people. Mm -hmm. And again, we're talking about numbers of people, which is different for every industry. So on a, on a wholesale business, you know, you'd be doing a lot of business when you're at 30 people versus say an agency that their top line isn't as big, but mm-hmm. I still think they're going to have similar challenges. And then what happens is um, in, in a lot of businesses, once you are at a certain size, you know, you have to have certain quality of financials. You might need a certain type of uh, bank lending facility in place. Um, so that's going to change what you do with, um, with your finance team. Mm-hmm. And a lot of small companies don't have any finance team. I mean, we didn't. So went from nothing to you know, a really um, sophisticated one right now. And then on the other side, um, you might have a lot of generalists when you're um, smaller. And then when you get bigger, you can, you want specialists in certain areas and you can afford them and you can afford some of the best people, right? As, as the company grows. And so I think that's um, what a lot of companies uh, will, will, you know, probably naturally happens and they may or may not think about it, but that's um, definitely what I've seen. That's great. That makes a lot of sense, Luke. Luke, is there anything else you'd like to mention or pass on to either other business owners, to potential employees, or to potential customers of either New Air or of Retail Band? Yeah, I mean, I think um, I, would, I would just say, I know your audience is a lot of business owners, and, and I would just say that if you have an idea, um, you know, go out there and start that, that new business. Even if you have another, I can tell you, like, I'm overloaded, but I'm having a lot of fun starting um, retail band and doing the page one podcast. It's, it's honestly, it's so much fun. Um, I mean, this is partially why we're talking and doing more networking and meeting folks like you. And, uh, and I'll just say that along the way, I kind of passed up other business opportunities as I was growing new And, um, you know, it's not like there's a lot of regret, but you just look at some other friends got into other businesses and those were succeeding. So then I said, when it came up again with retail band, I just knew I had to jump on it. And so, um, yeah, I get maybe unusual advice, but I'd say, uh, you know, it's, it's always going to be super hard at the beginning and people who've been running a business for 10 years probably forgot how hard it was at the beginning. And that's kind of what I'm seeing, but it's also very rewarding and, and a ton of fun. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And that's uh, a lot of the reason why I'm doing this podcast. I'm just having a lot of fun with it and it's uh, challenging, but rewarding. And you get to talk to, to neat people like you, like serial entrepreneurs like Luke Peters. So <laughs> I love so. it too. Uh, Luke, tell us uh, how should listeners get a hold of you if they'd like to reach out and find out more about you or talk to you more? Yep. Um, best way is, uh, well, check out the podcast, page one podcast. You'll find it out there. And then um, reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm pretty active there. And uh, just Luke Peters, easy to Great. find. Luke Peters in uh, Cyprus and uh, Retail Band, New Air Appliances and Page One Podcast. Great. Hey, Luke, thanks so much for being on the show today with me. Really appreciate it. You've got a great story. Thanks for sharing it. Thanks, Don. Really enjoyed it. Okay. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for listening to My Company Story. We have new episodes coming out every week, so please subscribe if you like this. And if you'd like to hear previous episodes, you can go to mycompanystory.com or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Also, if you or someone you know would be interested in coming on the show, please email me at don at Thanks for listening.